Hey, good morning, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorgia.com, answering the questions I get from around the world. Before we start, let me show you my highlighted item of the day. This thing is the coolest. This thing is cool. Uh, Utah Raptor is an amazing dinosaur, and this particular claw is the foot claw, the killing claw of a Utah Raptor. But what they've done is they've actually added what would be the uh, uh, keratin covering, the nail onto the bone. See, when a dinosaur dies, its fingernails decompose, and what we see in museums are the claw cores, which is the center part of the uh, claw. Well, in this particular specimen, they've recreated the nail, making this the most wicked looking thing we sell. This thing is awesome. It is from a Utah Raptor, so it was, uh, the actual claw core was molded off of that of a Utah Raptor claw but then the nail, the blade was added. This thing is amazing. What I like about it is it comes with its own base so you can display it in your office or on your desk or um, anywhere you want. But I gotta tell you, if you are a collector, if you're somebody that collects fossils, dinosaur bones, that kind of stuff, um, this would be a replica that you would definitely want to add. It is item number 3547. If you go to our website store, uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a search uh, button where you can key in that number and go directly to it. Or while you're there, surf through it. You can't believe some of the stuff we've got on our website. It's pretty cool, I've got to admit. All right, let's get into it. This first question comes from my friend Alex from here in San Antonio, Texas. Alex has been sending me this question forever. Actually, Alex's dad has been sending it to me for Alex, and I keep promising I'm going to get to it. Well, guess what? Today, Alex, is your lucky day. Uh, his question is, is an Titan a real dinosaur, or is it a species of Edmontosaurus? One of the confusing things about paleontology, and any science for that matter, is things are constantly changing as more information is becoming available. In this particular case, there are a lot of people that believe that the dinosaur named Anatotitan is actually a dinosaur named Anatosaurus, which is actually a dinosaur named Edmontosaurus. Um, they're very, very similar. I, I will tell you this, some paleontologists that I posed this question to came back to me and said, look, they're distinctively two different animals. So yes, they are related, but they're not the same thing. The other half of the people I posed this to said, absolutely, Anatotitan and Edmontosaurus are the exact same animal. Unfortunately, Alex, I cannot give you a definitive answer because sometimes in science, there are no definitive answers. There are hypotheses. There are people that make educated guesses and sometimes looking at the exact same evidence, they come up with two different answers. And that may very well be the case with Anatotitan. As best I can tell, looking at the limited evidence I've had the chance to look at, I believe Anatotitan is its own distinct species. But uh, many people in paleontology disagree with that. And to their point, they have access to much more information than I do. So I would say that in, in uh, this particular case, it's a toss up, buddy. I don't know. I just don't know. Um, who knows? Again, that, you know, that's what I like about paleontology though, this idea that science is a definitive yes and no to me is absurd. This is what I like about paleontology. We are constantly refining ideas and new information is giving us new insight and giving us new answers. And that's the essence of science, is to constantly look for new answers and to challenge those of your predecessors. All right, uh, Reese, and by the way, Alex, make sure to tell your dad thank you for um, writing this to me. And Chilton, thank you so much for taking so much time to convey this question to me and apologize to Alex for me taking so long. All right, next is Reese from Lanerst, Wales. Hey George, hope you're doing well, buddy. I am. Reese, it's nice to hear from you again. I have another question for you. Do you think dromaeosaurids were fast and powerful enough to scramble up trees with great bursts of speed? Thank you for answering and as always, stay in good health, my friend. Thank you, Reese. I hope you and your family are in good health as well. Uh, dromaeosaurids, for some of you young people that may not uh, recognize the name, Dromaeosaurids are better known as raptors. Raptors truly scientifically are considered dromaeosaurids. And among the dromaeosaurids are Deinonychus and Velociraptor and Utah Raptor and Dromaeosaurus. Those dinosaurs all fit within the family of, of dromaeosaurids. Okay, were they fast enough to climb a tree? Well, you know, I've seen dogs run up a tree before using enough speed, even something like a dog, and the dog is not designed for climbing. So certainly, 
Dromaeosaurids would have had that ability to do that. But here's where I differ with a lot of paleontologists. I don't believe that they would have had the arm strength necessary to pull themselves up into trees uh, without taking a running start. And also, if it is a tree that is going vertically, that is straight up and down, I do not believe that any dromaeosaurid had the ability to simply crawl up that tree like, say, a squirrel would crawl up a tree or a cat or something of that nature. I just don't believe that their arms had the strength to be able to lift the weight of their body. Their back legs certainly were very strong, but, uh, you know, perhaps, I don't know, maybe I need to rethink that. Perhaps they could use their arms to grasp the tree and then maybe use their back legs to sort of scale it. Uh, have you ever seen um, people climbing telephone poles? Now today, of course, they use those big bucket cranes. But when I was a kid climbing a telephone pole, people actually put on sort of spikes on their shoes and sort of shimmied up the tree using their feet to kind of propel them and using their hands to hang on. It certainly may be possible, Reese, that that's what they did. I personally just do not believe that that is the intention of raptors. I believe raptors are better suited to make their living on the ground where they were much more effective. All right, Sean from Slidell, Louisiana. Hey, I was in Slidell, Louisiana, Sean, about four years ago. Uh, ate at two different restaurants there. Loved it, man. Your Cajun cooking is amazing. But I got to tell you something, buddy. I live in Texas where we kind of pride ourselves on jalapenos and hot chilies. Man, that heat from the Louisiana food was enough to set my mouth on fire. That's some strong stuff, brother. Okay, hello, DG. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of yours and really hope this question gets selected. Well, guess what, Sean? I'm a huge fan of yours, and, I, and we collect, uh, selected your, your question, so congratulations. My favorite theropod dinosaur is Carnotaurus. Love that dude. And I, and I like to think of it as a predator, but other people say it's a scavenger. Carnotaurus has crazy thick, robust upper skull and jaws, but its lower jaw is slender and weak. My opinion is that it used its upper jaw like an ax to cut into smaller dinosaurs, putting its probable great speed into play. Also, I think its horns were colorful and used in mating and territorial display. Once again, I hope this question is selected and I hope you have a great day. P.S. I go to Slidell High School in Slidell, Louisiana. Well, Sean, it is great to hear from you and I don't know what your team mascot is, but whatever it is, go Slidell High School. Uh, uh, let me tell you something about my opinion of all this talk about uh, large carnivores, large theropods being scavengers. I think it's absurd. I think the idea that any large theropod had the ability to survive and make a living by finding things that are dead makes absolute no sense when we look at modern animals. The only animals that can make their living today, and really any time in history, uh, that were pure and absolute scavengers are animals that can traverse tremendous amounts of distance using practically no energy. When you get to an animal that's dead, its body is beginning to decay, depending on when you get there. Um, that means there's less uh, nutrients in the body because the um, meat is decomposing. The value is therefore reduced, meaning you need to eat more. So first, the idea that you're finding something dead is unrealistic in modern, uh, in modern analogy. Animals, when they die, are gone very quickly. And no giant animal makes his living walking around hoping to stumble across one of these things. Uh, like I was saying, you can travel great distances. Like, for instance, you've got to be very little, where you don't burn a lot of calories moving, or you've got to be like a vulture where you can glide on thermals using practically no energy, and you can traverse those hundreds and hundreds of miles in search of something that's dead. Well, big theropods can't do that. They're burning more energy than they're going to recover when they finally, if they finally, arrive at the body. So right off the bat, I agree with you that the notion that something as big as Carnotaurus was a scavenger doesn't make sense. Now, uh, would it scavenge if it found it? Of course it would, but that doesn't mean it can make its living doing that seven days a week. So I agree with you, Sean, that Carnotaurus, like any other large theropod, is a predator first and then a specialist second and then a scavenger third, meaning I'm a carnivore, I'm a predator, I'll eat anything I can catch, but I might be better at catching something else. But if I find somebody that's dead, I'm going to eat them. And that's my opinion. And that's my opinion of Carnotaurus. I agree with you that I think that dinosaur was like any other big theropod, 
He is a hunter. As for your point about its horns being brightly colored, I agree with you as well. I think that's very plausible because when we look around at animals today, we find that color is very important and there would be no reason why a male wouldn't want brightly colored horns on his head to attract the attention of a female. All right, Garrett from Tyler, Texas, not too far from here. Hey, DG, I have a weird fight for you. Who would win between Endrocotherium and Diplodocus? And also, I find I found your catalog very interesting, and I'm hoping to buy some replicas in the future. Well, thank you, Garrett. I hope you do like the catalog. There is a lot of stuff on there now. There's a lot of stuff on there. Um, okay, whenever you guys pose these questions about who would win in a fight, I always like to preference it by saying, listen, you know, this is an absolute guess. It's nothing more than a guess on my part, and there's no way that I can say with any certainty what would happen. But... If something as big as an Endrocotherium, which clearly didn't live with the age of dinosaurs, but if it met something as big as a Diplodocus, wow, who knows what would happen? I mean, Endrocotherium certainly would have been more mobile, faster, uh, more likely to turn in a quick radius, meaning he could, he could attack the sides of a Diplodocus, but Diplodocus is an enormous animal, and that tail is certainly powerful, and man, I don't know, maybe he could use his whip to kind of keep the Endrocotherium at bay, but... Man, if that thing ever got in, you know, those hooves in the front are enormous on the Drucketheres. They could ra probably raise up slightly on their back leg and probably use them to attack. Whew. Very hard question to answer, Garrett. I don't know the answer to it. Um, for those of you that like to post things on my um, uh, YouTube page, I would like to hear from you guys. And I know these two animals didn't live together, never saw each other, but I would like to hear some of your opinions. I read everything you guys post. I don't always respond to it, but I read everything because I find it interesting. All right, finally, Luke from Astoria, Oregon. Hey, DG, how's it going? It's going great, Luke. I hope it's going well for you. I may not be a paleontologist, but I have a theory, and I want to know what you think. I believe that T-Rexes tend to pair for life, but many times another male T-Rex would come in and take the female as his own by either chasing away or killing the current male. What do you think? Well, first of all, Luke, you do not have to be a paleontologist to have an opinion. Certainly, paleontologists that have access to more information have a more scientific opinion and an opinion based more on fact versus um, just their feelings, but you do not have to be a paleontologist. So never worry about prefacing your question with that. I look at your questions, all of your questions, as very important and very good. Okay, so, uh, well, your opinion, is it possible? Of course. Listen, Tyrannosaurus rex is related to birds, and there are a lot of birds who mate for life. And the only time they move on is if, in fact, they are replaced by a stronger, more powerful um, uh, male or female. Um, it is possible that Tyrannosaurus rex mated for life, and that, yes, in the event that he was challenged by a rival male, certainly uh, that relationship could come to an end where a bigger, more powerful male would have the ability to chase off the younger male and steal his girlfriend. So I believe that's certainly possible, and I think that is a, a very interesting concept, and it's a good, uh, it's good, it's a good uh, idea. I like it a lot. All right. If you have a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Submit your question. Here's some advice to everybody out there. Keep it short. Keep it simple. If you make really, really, really long questions, the people that go through these and pick the ones that I read, they will simply dismiss them if it takes them 10 minutes to read it because they know I just don't have the time to do it. So um, follow me on Facebook. And when you go to Facebook, I'm at George Blassing. A G E R G E B L A S I N G. I do have a Dinosaur George fan page, but I don't really do much on it. I, I post a lot more stuff through my, my uh, individual page. So uh, follow me there. Uh, remember, you guys, always use good manners. I appreciate your courtesy when conveying your points. Uh, I like that a lot of you challenge the things I say. I find that great, and that's the essence of science. Don't agree with me. Don't uh, you don't have to agree with me, you guys. You can argue your points. Some of you have posted very, very good arguments, uh, and I appreciate them very much. Until next time, have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you all soon.